did you study for the OSCP only through the free platforms available? And if you did, which ones were they? Okay, so I'm not sure how long or how much time do you want to devote to each question, but I'm trying. I'm going to try to be as uh, succinct as possible. In terms of my study for the OSCP, I actually did most of the studying during the OSCP. So let's say, I mean, let's take my case, for example. It was about, I think it was uh, May when I got the 60 days of labs, May 2019. So... I think I started the 60 days of labs somewhere around uh, late May, let's say the 20th of May. And for the first 30 days, I've been only working on the materials provided by the offensive security. So right. okay. I haven't actually studied from other places, from other platforms, yeah. like, uh, such as I haven't been doing labs on Hack the Box and stuff like that. For the yeah. first 20, 30 days of, uh, of my 60 days of labs, I only studied the materials that were given by offensive security. Um, right. And I've also been doing the labs, lab exercises and reports in at the same time to get the extra five points. So it was... At that time, I actually felt the fear of missing out because I wasn't doing any lab. I was only doing the materials, like the the book and the videos, Just and the I wasn't actually that comes with it. Yeah, yeah, I've, I haven't done any labs for the first thirty days, so it it kind of felt like pressure. And only afterwards, when I finished with the exercises and with the lab reports, uh, only thereafter I started doing the actual labs from the OSCP. But to to answer your question, I didn't do much study outside of uh, outside of the certification because offensive security provides you with all the materials you need in order to be successful uh, with the certification, provided that you have some um, decent knowledge in um, Linux, Bash, and networking. If you want to gain an edge over other cybersecurity professionals, Take my Python for Pentesters course and uh, learn how to leverage the power of Python in penetration testing and cybersecurity. Link in the description. I guess it's still fairly similar to when I did my OSCP back in 2016. It's, um, I actually, the first time I did it, I failed and it's, I know exactly why it's because I didn't study hard enough and uh, I, I very much rushed it. I got to about maybe halfway and then I, uh, I, I just, I'd had enough and I was like, no, I'm just going to go straight for it. I can't be bothered. And that was a massive mistake because I had to do it all over again. Um, so yeah, don't, anyone who's watching, don't make the same mistake I did. Stick to the study. Just do yeah. the coursework that comes with it. That's more than enough for what you need. And just like you said, as long as you have a background uh, knowledge in Linux, especially Bash and uh, any sort of networking principles, that's um, going to help you go forward. So it sounds like it's still fairly similar to um, back when I did it. Obviously, there's some new stuff in there. I don't think it would stay the same. They have updated uh, uh, the entire course. A lot of the materials have been fairly new since since this February, I guess, and they've added like, they've doubled the content in terms of the written content that you have to study. And I know that they've Jeez. also added a lot of uh, video materials as well. So the new OSCP, the 2020 updated version uh, is probably uh, more extensive, much more extensive than what we've studied like, uh, like a year or two years back, which actually is a really good thing for the people that are just... Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think it's good. It's also, it's meant to be a hard uh, certification to do. It's not meant to be an easy one. It's not entry level. It's, yeah, it's, it's meant to be difficult. So I'm, I'm glad they've upgraded a little bit and um, put some new stuff in there.